Richard Musgrave Evans and uh, I'm on the Spencer Golf again which is a nice fine body of water jutting up into Outback South Australia. We've got a few headlands jutting into the picture, a bit of a mangroves and right on the horizon some nice distant hills and a nice foreground lead in here. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm still uh, shooing flies as usual but what I've got is I'm painting on a board, a slippery board as opposed to a, uh, a linen which has quite a texture. And what I've done, because I'm used to painting on the, on the raw linen, which is very similar colour to what I've got here, I've actually changed the tone of the board. So instead of being a white board, it's a kind of a neutral tone. And uh, the reason I've done that is because that's what I'm used to doing. And with the board itself, I've done a lot of board in the past, but haven't done much recently. So um, I want to experiment with that. I find the board, you can slip and slide a bit more. It's uh, with a palette knife. There's a few interesting things you can get by using boards, so I want to have a bit of fun with that today. Alright, I'm going to get into it. Now, I've blocked in the composition, as you can see, only with darks and marks, just to get an idea on what I want. And uh, I'm going to go for the biggest difference now, which I think is that lovely water. So I'm going to put the water in first. And, uh, alright, let's, let's do it. Okay. Bit of cobalt blue. A little bit of a uh, viridian green to make a nice turquoise. Okay, now I want to keep it fairly dark and rich because you get that beautiful dark rich turquoise blues and purples in the midday and uh, that's the kind of effect I'm going for. So start off with fairly deep tone, you can always lighten it later on. Now, the seaweed colour which is coming through is more of a purple colour. So you've got the turquoise colours, but you've also got this nice purple colour where the seaweed's on the bottom of the ocean. So, it's a bit darker tone than that. Try that. Yeah, it's a beautiful bank out there. I might make it a bit darker again so it stands out a bit better. Alright. Paper towel, paper towel. Now the water as it's getting into the shallower water has a bit more of the yellow ochre colour with it. So we'll get some of that yellow ochre and put it in the mix with the turquoise and the blue. What we got here? Put it in like so. Smearing technique is quite good with a palette knife and that's what I'm saying with the board, you can really, probably more so with a board, you can really smear like so. This gives you a really interesting fact. for the sky that was too green so just changing the tone a bit with a bit more blue maybe a bit more burnt sienna also in there like 
like that. And as the sky goes higher, obviously it gets a cleaner colour and more intense blue. So, and next. Deeper blue again as it goes up. Okay. Now I'm just going to get all those colours and put them to one side. They'll come in handy for later on when I'm mixing other things. Such as salt bush and whatnot. Okay, so now I'm doing the top of the sky, so I've just gone a bit richer blue. Mix that beautiful magenta in with it. Get that deep blue. A little bit more again, slightly deeper. These flies are around again because the wind's cut out a bit. And the wind cuts out. In come the flies. Just going to blend a little. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Introducing the two colours or three colours into each other so you get a nice subtle blend from uh, top to bottom. Wipe it clean. Oops, there you go. If you haven't got a clean knife, you end up with uh, all sorts of fun and games. So, you've got to remember to clean it as you rub like that. Okay, now just on the horizon, I'm just going to add a little bit lighter tone. These flies are fun and games today, that's for sure. That seems like I've gone crazy different, and I have. I'm going to blend them all in so it'll work out. As the two blend together, it'll get a nice sunlit quality about it.
Bueno, bueno, bueno. You get that nice warm and cool contrast too, because I've got the cool of the blue, but then I've got the warm tones, and they're half mixed. And so in your eyes, you've got this warm and cool dancing, which is always nice. Takes a bit of blending, but once you get that right, it all works. Okay, so I've spent long enough on that, now I'll get into some other stuff. Like, it's too dark, so we'll lighten her up a bit. Just going to bung the uh, distant headland in there, so that's what I'm up to now. bringing that water up to the horizon line now just by smearing it okay so now I'll get a bit more turquoise again I can find some using the pellet knife on edge and that creates a nice clean line Introducing a few lighter tones because what's happening is in the slack water areas out there there's some of the areas where there's less wind on the water you're getting that real pale blue uh, reflection of the sky in the water rather than looking into the water so it just gives nice pale blue bits on the surface which is a nice contrast to the other stuff Right, now with one big blow, we'll just pull all that through. Okay. Let's have a bit of salt bush. Just grab a bit of the sky colour. A bit more burnt sienna thrown in with it. Let's see what we've got here. A bit more yellow ochre. Just throw a few uh, random chunky marks in there. Let's 
move some of that paint out of the way because I haven't got much room on the pellet here. So I'll stick it over here. Okay. Right, now I'm going to mix up that beautiful earthy orange tone that you can see in there. So, use a bit of cat orange and burnt sienna to start with, see what I get. With white, to lighten it right off. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, you know, not too far off. Not too bad. A bit more yellow ochre again. Just lightly dragging, the colour of the board itself is a little bit like the colour of some of the foliage, so you can leave bits of board showing through. That seems to work nice. Oop, here we go, look at that one. Not too far from the road here, so you can hear a few cars going past. Okay, now there's a few headlands jutting out here, so what I might do, before I go any further, start putting a bit of them in where I want them. Okay, so I don't want to be there. One just here. This one just jutting out there like that. The tide's going out as we speak, so it's quite good because I I'm enjoying it just going down a little bit. Just out here, it's kind of rocky as well as sand, so I'm putting some of this rock and there's a bit of magenta in the works there because it looked like that. Try a bit of burnt sienna as well. And a bit more yellow ochre, whoops, a bit more yellow ochre. Bunged in there like so. Okay, so it's a bit darker where the water meets. The rocks are wet. Because the rocks are wet, they're a little bit darker in tone. So, right on the edge, I might just darken it off a little bit. Particularly out there, on the headlands. Jutting out, there's definitely some darks out there. Purposely just smearing the tones now, they come together beautifully. Get that kind of in and out of focus. Got a bit more sky blue colour here. Pull the sky blue across.
take some of the paint off. Oh, what's this? Take some of the paint off as I'm going. Here comes a car, believe it or not. Hopefully uh, it'll keep on going, it won't disturb you too much. No, mate, sorry. Okay. Someone lost their white dog. Okay, so there's a little headland in the distance out there I might put in. Just dragging, just working, always working around the picture, never finishing anything until it's uh, finally done. So I'm just going to work on a bit of these uh, she oak trees. Just lightly touch paint on. Stand back, have a look. a bit more of a turquoise for the water. Viridian green and a bit of uh, cobalt blue. A bit more green I reckon. As the day's going on, the water's getting more of that viridian because the sun's coming up. You can probably see it's starting to get a bit greener. It seems to get brighter as the sun gets higher. Just re-establishing some of those uh, headlands that are jutting out because as I was mixing the water then I lost a few of them so let's put them back in. More yellow ochre in that one. Take some of that paint off first, just a little bit off here.
actually taking the paint off at the moment rather than putting it on just by scraping back with the knife so now I can apply some paint fresh I wanted some good highlights so it was easier to take some of that paint off Get a bit more of that salt bush colour going. Quite a light tone today, that salt bush, so it might go a bit lighter, but it needs more yellow ochre. And a bit more brown, otherwise it'll look too blue. It is very blue, the colour, but it still is foliage, so you can't get too carried away with the colour of blue, otherwise it looks fake. back a bit, bring the road edge back up to a cleaner edge. Some of the cracks and all that juttering, jutting around. I'm working with that. Like so, winding its way up the hill. and blue a bit of a shadow here coming in so I might bung that in that's coming from that bush there shadows aren't crazy obvious today because the sun's so straight overhead being Australia and all but in saying that they're still there so when you put them in it's more convincing so they'll go in I'll stick them in You can see by putting those shadows in, it's given the illusion of light. If you've got shadow, light and shadow. Okay. Now, yeah. got to clean a few edges on the horizon here, I can see. So I'll take some paint off again. So I might use my finger for this, believe it or not. I'm going to get a softer edge. I'm pointing with the board, I can't get the soft edge that I can get with the, with the canvas, I can get a softer edge, easier. And uh, what I'm going to do instead is use my finger to soften. Because the water is very soft, so we need to get that soft edge. That seems to be working a treat, so I'll stay with that one. I may have even used a brush if I had one, but I didn't bring any, did I? Some of these things would have been a lot easier with the brush. Now I'm on the board, I'm finding it'd be easier to have a combination of brush and knife. Or knife and finger. That's working all right.
there's some nice mangroves sitting out on the uh, out on these little headlands. So put a few in. bit darker. I'm just making the headland in the far distance. Producing a few of those rocks in the shallow water. A little bit of a path down there, another little track, so I thought I'd throw that in. Gives a nice highlight, a bit of variety. Okay, so. white and yellow ochre there. Oops, it's green. Pure white. Yellow ochre. Just a few little shacks on the horizon there, nice little buildings on the horizon, little white marks, put them in. This other white mark I put in is just the roof of a shack just on the horizon, just up close, in the middle ground we'll say. This just adds a nice bit of uh, accent and interest I guess. Got a nice bug up here, we'll take him off. The bug wants to be part of the game. Yeah, he wants to, he's not coming off in a hurry. Alright, now that horizon here, let's have a look. Okay, well, that's about it. I've got the, uh, the majority of it all there now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take the camera off and let you have a close look at it. Uh, for now, that's about all I can get. It's got pretty much the right colours and tones and some nice abstract marks and whatever else. So, pretty much how I like it. Alright, no worries. Thank you very much. Alright, so there's the basic shot. You can see I've got a nice red dirt road leading out to some beach. Rocky sandy beach with mangroves and uh, a nice distant headland. Okay, and then today I'm working with my um, my four-wheel drive rather than the plain air trailer, 
and I've got an easel on the side of that one too so I've got that going all right so let's pan in and have a look so there you go there's the nice kind of uh, road winding its way in and then you've got the rocks you've got the, the wet rocks and the dry rocks they gave a good excuse to use different colors a bit of sand mixed into rocks turquoise water with the weed on the bottom which was those nice purple colors then you get the reflection of the sky in the uh, water which gives those pale blues the rocky mangrovey headlands jutting out the distant headland of mauves hovering in the distance then you've got this nice little roof here as a highlight that's the shack i just put a roof as a bit of a highlight and then some distant shack miles off there so that's the basic overall effect i'll just pan back again give you an idea of what we're looking at and there you go thank you Well there's the end of another show, now don't forget to subscribe and press the like button and forward it on to your friends. Until next time, we'll see you down the road.